And the Emmy goes to Michael Imperioli, the soprano. What's going through your head that night? It's a very strange feeling, being in that room with all the best people in your industry, and then, then they say your name, and all of a sudden, all the attention of this huge event is focused on, on, on you. It's very surreal. Being on The Sopranos is like the greatest thing in the world, all right? For an actor, if this is the only thing I'd done, I'd be okay with that. Oh, here he is. The juicy role Michael Imperioli has played for five seasons is Christopher Moltisanti, the hothead nephew of crime boss Tony Soprano. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? It's a role that's made him a star on screen and off. This is very weird that people know you when, yeah, sure. when you walk down the street. How do you deal with that? Does it ever become like uh, too much? You wish people would leave you alone sometimes? <laughs> Um, you know, it all depends on the people, because everybody's different, you know? Get a pastry box. Move it! Christopher is this, he's a bad guy in a lot of ways. He kills people, he, he smacks women around. But seeing you in the street today, people love you. Why do you think people are so engaged with this character? What is it about Christopher that strikes a chord with people? He's a criminal who does these terrible things. You're gonna get high. But within that, they see someone who struggles with themselves. You ever feel like nothing good was ever gonna happen to you? Yeah, and nothing did. So what? I'm alive, I'm surviving. That's it. I don't wanna just survive. You know, and trying to live a life uh, with friends, with family, with co workers, with, with a, uh, a love interest. And, and trying to be the best they can within that, and trying to live some kind of noble life. And I think people relate to that in a way. I had a dream last night. Most reviewers agree the appeal of Tony Soprano, played by James Gandolfini, and others on the show stems from the fact that their characters are complex, alternating between evil and suburban banality. It says with pulp. You like it with pulp? Not this much. I like the one that says some pulp. Without conscience, yet haunting. Let go of me! Let go! It's fun letting out that shadow, that dark side, you know, um, which we all have as human beings, but we try to keep, keep it in check most of the time. Michael Imperioli was born 38 years ago in suburban New York. Except for playing Oliver Twist in fourth grade, he never mentioned acting to his parents again until the night before he was supposed to leave for college. I wanted to be in the city. I wanted to go to acting school. I said, I think that's what I want to do. And they were like, well, you know, it's your life if that's what you want to do, as long as, you, you know, you're really serious about it. Friends from the neighborhood never doubted he'd make it and say success hasn't gone to his head. He hasn't changed. He's the same. You'll see him here, he's with his kids. He walks down the street, hi, you know, people ask him for he signs. You know, he knows where he came from. He came from middle class people in Mount Vernon, and he hasn't changed. He was a kind of young Jean-Paul Belmondo. Ah. A very strange, sexy look. Jean-Claude Baker owns a New York City restaurant where Imperioli worked as a waiter, a role played by many a struggling actor. Waiter, bartender, busboy, cook, whatever. Um, I moved furniture. I was a messenger. Um, I did phone market research, which was probably the worst job. Is that right? Yeah, that was the worst <laughs> one. In between jobs to make a living were bit parts in movies like Goodfellas, Clockers. I look out for you, you look out for me. I shot Andy Warhol. Hey, what's his name? Oh, yes. You like it? The Basketball Diaries. He's been in more than 40. Imperioli has written screenplays, too, with credits like Summer of Sam and five episodes of The Sopranos. As a running gag, he has Christopher struggling to write a screenplay about the mob. I have never seen you apply yourself like this. I love movies. You know that. That smell in Blockbuster? That candy and carpet smell, I get high off. 
I find it a lot harder, um, probably because acting is what I've really done, mostly. Writing is, you know, blank page that you have to fill, so, um, and it's a solitary thing. Last year, Imperioli opened a small theater in New York he calls Studio Dante. The dilapidated brownstone was restored by his wife, Victoria. Inspiration was just a beautiful, magical theater atmosphere, so when people come in, they, they sense uh, something very special. At the theater, colleagues from The Sopranos work on projects with him. The Sopranos. The cast is riding high right now. Last Sunday, The Sopranos also won the Emmy for Best Drama Series. But along with the accolades, there is still the criticism. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. <laughs> huh? Does it bother you that there are a number of Italian-Americans who think The Sopranos is stereotypical? Yeah, you know, probably, I guess somewhere it does bother me. But it's like, Italians have assimilated way enough into our culture to the point where the Sopranos is not gonna like keep some kid who's Italian American from getting into a good college because the dean thinks that his father's a mobster or something because he happens to be Italian. I mean, we're past that. It's, sure. you know, our audience is a lot smarter than that. Please greet Johnny Ventimiglia. The Sopranos is on hiatus. Its next season, said to be the last, won't air until 2006. One character who won't be there anymore is Christopher's girlfriend, Adriana. She was killed off for working with the feds. Come on. No, no, Come on. please. How soon do you know when another character is going to get whacked? Do you know at the beginning of the season? Or? No, we don't no. know. Um, we know as a group a couple of weeks before. Uh huh. And um, we have a tradition when, when someone is going to go, uh, we take them out to dinner. So. When you get asked to go to dinner, it's not such a great thing, right? <laughs> During time off from The Sopranos, Imperioli pursues passions like Taekwondo and playing the horses. $3 try box, two, six, eight. He's also shooting some other projects. He's getting around your thing the other day at the restaurant. You know how fish talk? Including a first, the voice of a cartoon character, Frankie in the upcoming feature, Shark Tales. Uh, Lenny, forget about it, okay? We do a couple of practice runs. Bada bing, bada boom, pops happy, you're a shark. Life goes on. Capiche? Okay, okay, capiche. Wait, 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 bingo. It's challenging, you know, to uh, have to communicate a character just with your voice without, you know, your eyes or your gestures or your face or anything like that. I mean, I finally did something my children can actually see. I was going to ask you that. Now, your little kids, ages three and five? Three and uh, six. Three yeah. and six. You, you don't let them watch The Sopranos. No, 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 no. I mean, a lot of people think, you know, Christopher is a cool guy. Your kids think you're cool because you're in Shark Tale? Absolutely, yeah. Not because I'm a shark. You say, my father's a shark. That's what he does for a living. You know? <laughs> Still, those mob connections can come in handy. You have a 13-year-old daughter? Yeah. I gotta wonder when, when she starts dating, if the guys who come over are gonna say, oh my God, yeah. that's Christopher. Well, that'll be a good thing if they're a little intimidated, <laughs> you know? Keep them on their toes. 